Okay, welcome back class. Um, in our um, previous class, we would have um, looked at the chopper, mainly the class A, class B, and the class AB. Um, we also look at um, opto isolators and we look at the principles of operation around them. And then we started, look, well, we completed um, I'm looking at losses in the MOSFET. And um, you would have done some calculations around the MOSFET. Now the, the, the power switches, they have seen where um, you can use them in a number of applications, primarily in your um, converters. And you having to um, switch these at high frequencies. Um, now, these devices can generate heat. Right, so how do we keep these devices um, running at the specif specified temperature by the manufacturer so that the reliability of these devices can be maintained? Right, we're going to be looking at that in, in um, this lecture. So we will look at how can we cool this device by using what we call heat sinks, right? So we'll be exploring that. So, and before looking at the heat sinks, I like to just um, uh, mention here what heat sinks are, right? So I start out with our definition, right? These are those devices that enhance heat dissipation from a component to a cooler ambient. Right, and, we, and it's usually air, or we can use other fuels, um, fluids as well, right? By fluid, um, could be some um, other gas, right? Not only air, um, could be uh, liquid. All right, and as I've mentioned earlier, and well, the primary purpose of um, our heat sink here is to maintain the temperature of the device that um, you wish to cool within um, a specified limit, right? And of course, that limit um, is given by the manufacturer. So I will be showing you um, um, a, a, an example of one. Um, such device and the temper temperature limits that the manufacturer impose on these um, on this device. So basically, um, you want to be able to keep um, your device um, temperature under under these limits so that you can ensure reliable operation of your device, right? So I'll be um, going through that um, in this um, lecture. All right, now, um, for doing that, we're going to look at some some factors that you need to consider 
when you are designing each things. Um, <coughs> you, the first one, you want to be mindful of the power that um, that needs to be dissipated. That's the first thing. Right? Um, you also want to look at the maximum allowable component temperature. Right? So these you can get from the the manufacturer's data sheet. You want to look at the available space or the volume for the heat sink, right? Um, you want to make sure you, you the, the heat sink that you are selecting can fit into the, the area that um, you wish to, to um, install it. Um, so install it on the, the device. We don't want to select um, a heat sink that is uh, much larger than the, the space that is available. Um, so that's another factor you need to be mindful of and also the power density and as, um, airflow parameters. Right? You want to, to also look at pressure drops and bypass effect and also the manufacturability, right? After you have um, considered um, these factors, right? Can you manufacture it, right? So you want to, to um, look at, at these factors before. And then um, the, the cost. How much is it going to cost? Right. Um, the material that it's made of mainly is um, most of them, the aluminum alloys. Right. So I'm showing you here um, typical heat sinks that you, you make um, come across. Right. So it's the aluminum alloy type. Um, I'll show you ones. You're probably wondering what type can be mounted on your your power MOSFET devices. And so these are typical type that you can actually pump, uh, mount on your, on your device. Of course, you need some kind of a, a what we we'll call a thermal compound, right? so that you can fill those um, little spaces between the heat sink and the, and the device that you wish, wish to um, attach, attach it to. All right, so we're going to look at the whole principle of um, heat transfer. All right, so basically, um, you say it is what it is. You say the science which seeks to predict the energy transfer which may take place between material bodies as a result of temperature difference. So the key word here is temperature difference, right? So it's a temperature difference that will result in a heat transfer. Right. Um, later on, I'm going to um, lighten, well, um, make an, an analogy to, to potential difference. Because um, most of you are familiar, well, you, uh, you should be familiar with the whole concept of a potential difference. Right. I normally do this just to make this concept um, simple and uh, can be understood by um, you, right? So 
for a potential difference when that wait, sorry when a potential difference exists we can have a current flowing right from your high potential to your low potential now with heat transfer it is not much different different right we need a temperature difference in order to have heat um, being transferred right so it's very much similar and i'll be using that analogy um, throughout this um, presentation to to um, bring across this concept right now we have three modes by which we can have heat transfer. You should have been familiar with them when you studied elementary physics, right? Conduction, convection, and radiation. We just go back through them, just in case you forget them. <laughs> All right. Um, so, conduction, conduction, so that's with solids, right? The heat transfer that exists in solids. And um, for convection, that is um, in um, relation to fluids, right? And um, the last one, I don't know why it's not coming up here, um, radiation, uh, right? Radiation, of course, that is um, the transfer, that the heat transfer by electromagnetic radiation, All right? So, we look at um, the convection cooling, right? We can have force convection and natural um, convection, and I'm demonstrating the two here um, in these pictures on the the um, right hand side of your of your screen. Um, so the first one, the force convection, right? This one here. Um, we have our hot body, right? This red um, um, circle that I have here, could be, I'm using it to represent a, a hot body that we wish to cool, right? So force commutation, we just uh, we could use some fan and um, you can blow that air over the hot body, right? And um, it will, um, move the heat away from that hot body. And of course, um, the faster this um, fan can um, spin and blow the air away, then the faster the rate you'll have heat um, being moved from the hot body. Um, natural convection, you don't put anything there to, to move the heat. You just leave it there and the old principle that um, the the hot air has a lower density than cold air. So what is going to happen? The hot air is going to rise. So that natural um, phenomena um, will exist when you have um, natural convection. So it's very simple, right? So that's convection cooling. All right, now I'm going to get into some technical terms here. Um, I will illustrate them. Um, which one coming up now? Um, um, Q, I'm going to use Q for the total power that um, is dissipated by the device that is being cooled. And um, we measure that in watts. Now the next one, I'm going to use TJ. That's your junction temperature of your device. And um, TC, that's the case temperature of your device. All right. Um, TS, that's the heat sink temperature. And of course, this is the maximum temperature of the heat sink, right, at the location that's closest to the device. And the last one, 
Let me move this out of the way so that you can see. Right, that's the ambient temperature. Right, TA, that's the ambient temperature. Um, <clears throat> let me just let me do something here. Bit. No, not this. Right. All right, I just shift that over a, a bit so that I can um, illustrate. Uh, something uh, here to you. All right. Remember, I told you at the, the start that um, we have heat. It moves from the hot, hottest point to the coolest point. Right. So in the same way, we have a potential difference. Right, you have current will flow from a high potential to a low potential. So you can think of it in, in this case, right? So we can model um, this, this um, concept here. Let us say we have our power flow, right? We are going to say that is Q. And we are going to use um, resistors to, to represent the, the, the what we call thermal resistance, right? Because depending on the, the material um, that the heat is flowing through, then you're going to have what we call some opposition to the flow. In the same way, when you have current flowing through a resistor, depending on the value of the, the, the material that the resistor is made up of, you will have opposition to the flow of that current. The same principle can be um, looked at here as it relates to heat flow. Depending on the material, that the heat is flowing through, you're going to have some opposition. Some material will cause the heat to flow through faster than some. All right? So let us look at it. Now, the heat is going to now move from the junction of the device. All right, let me just draw a little picture here, up here. Let's say this is a device you wish to cool and you are going to attach your heat sink. Let me leave a little space between it. You are going to attach your heat sink here. So that's your device and your heat sink. So the heat is going to be moving from the junction of the device. Um, let us um, put the junction um, somewhere here. So this is the junction and then this part right here that's the case pc let this a little bigger that you can see
junction turn right here so that's your case and yeah, this is a sink you're going to attach so so here's now the temperature of your heat sink and then um that's the outside here the ambient right so you want to get this heat out from the junction of the device you know, the heat come up to the case that's the surface of the, the device then now um you're going to attach that heat sink to the to the case so the heat is now going to move from the case to the sink right so junction to the case then it's going to move to the the sink and from the sink it then goes into the ambient all right so that is how the heat is going to be flowing through your device all right so heat you need your um so this is going to be the case so i put a resistor here and so this is a thermal resistance from the junction to the case junction to the case that means Get this bigger that you can see from the junction here to the case. Um, and then we need another thermal resistance. So basically, right here at this point, at this point, this is the, the junction temperature. And then at this point, from your junction, then you go to the the case. So this would be the temperature of your case. And from your case, right? If you look at the diagram, that from your case, you then go to the sink. right so i can put another one here right so right here this is the temperature of the sink and between here is a thermal resistance of your that would be case to sink case to sink and then we can put another resistor here final one and now from your sink to the ambient right so let us say let's say it's here um, the, the, this heat escaping into so um we could have uh, another resistor here so that's the thermal resistance and that's from the sink to the ambient right and that is it Very simple. Now, um, how would you find the resistance, the thermal resistance between the case and the ambient? I'm going to ask you this question. Sure, you would add um um R case on the um R C S and R 
Um, what's the last one? S A. R C S and R S A, sir. R C A. R C S and R S A. Mm-hmm. They add those two. Yeah. Because it's case and junk between case and junction, right? No, um case um and ambient. Okay, oh, case and ambient, yeah. So it it's between it's C S case to sync and then um sync to ambient. So those two resistors? Mm, okay. Okay. All right. All right. So let me tell you something first. Um, the same heat, uh, you can consider this to be a series circuit. So I, um, I use power here, but power here is the power that's flowing here is really heat. I don't know why my pointer not coming up here. So. Let me try to. So, right, um, the power that is flowing here, uh, we can consider it is heat, and um, you can consider it to be a series circuit. So the, the current flowing through these thermal resistors are going to be the same. The same principle that you apply to a series circuit, you can use it. All right, so um, for example, what is the, the, um, the, 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 the um, let's say the, the thermal resistance between the case and the ambient. You just need the temperature difference, right? Between remember, it is a temperature difference that is going to cause a current flow. So let us say right here is the the ambient. So the difference in temperature between the case and the ambient is going to cause a current to flow, right? So um, we could say T, T case minus T ambient, right? And um, if we divide that by the power flow right here, then we will get the thermal resistance between um, the case and the ambient. Right, so let me just write that here. So R term between the case and the ambient, we say it's just T case minus T ambient. And that will divide by the, the power, right? In this case, will be Q. Right, are you seeing that? Yes, sir. So the power in this case is, is, um, is heat, is, is thermal. Yeah. Energy. Right, right, right. It's thermal energy. Okay, so we're, oh. So it's like if you look at it, V equal I R. Right? Yes. To get the resistance, you take the potential difference and you divide by the current. Now, what we have flowing through the device. We have heat flowing through. 
So I say Q here. This is flowing through the 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 um the the the, the, the device, your whatever device you wish to cool and the heat sink. Right? So this is like the current, let us say. Now, for this current to flow through it, it um, there must be a difference in um, 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 potential. In this case, there's a difference in temperature, right? So you have a difference in temperature between the junction that is going to cause the heat to flow through it, right? So it's like V equal IR, right? V equal IR. Uh, we see it now. We see it now. Right. Very simple. I know this this can be complicated, but when I use this analogy, um, it's normally as clear as crystal. You never get one of these problems wrong. Right. Yeah, so v, v over um I. Sorry, I should put R here. Right. So we want the thermal resistance. R equal um, v, what's that mean? V over I, right? So it's the same thing happening here. Same thing. All right. Um, let me check if you really understand what is happening. Now. Um, suppose I want um, between the junction and the sink. What's the thermal resistance between junction and the sink? So it would be between TJ and TS. So that is RJC uh, and RCS over uh, Q. Yeah, right. Um, but more so, put the temperature difference. TJ, yeah. right? TJ um, minus. TS. TS over Q, right? Oh, yes. So that's, that's yes. what I want to get in your mind. Is a temperature difference that is going to cause the heat to flow through the device. Yes, sir. Just bear in mind, always blink it back to V equal IR. A potential difference causes a current to flow. A temperature difference causes heat to flow. All right. Good. Sir, quick question. Yes. Um, so I'm looking at the diagram now and I see TJ, TC, and TS. You asked a while ago um, for the temperature difference between um, TJ and TS, right? Um, the, the thermal resistance, the thermal resistance. Yeah, between, between um, the junction. TJ. And the and the sink, yes. Yeah. So, um, would TC play a role in this? TC. Yeah, seeing that um, there is a, a resistance at the 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 case as well. Um. You see, you you would have this temperature, the temperature at this point, and then you do know the temperature here. So what happens in between? Um, 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 yes, it affects what comes out here, but um, what matters is that you know the temperature at the junction and the temperature at the sink. Because remember, it is flowing through the device. Right, right. This heat, the Q, is heat flowing through the device considered as a series circuit. Right, so um, is as a result of the difference in temperature. Right, so we could also look at um, what is the thermal resistance um, between the junction and the case. Right, between junction and the case, the temperature difference between junction and case. Um, divide by the heat that is flowing through it, right? What is it? What is the thermal resistance between the case and the sink? It is going to be the TC minus TS 
divided by Q, the heat that is flowing through it. Right? What is the the, the junction um, um, ambient um, thermal resistance? It is going to be the difference in temperature, the junction, and the ambient. So Tj minus Ta divided by Q. Right? You notice Q is constant row well, because you have so you can liken this to a series circuit. Current flowing in a series circuit is going to be the same through all the, the um, components. Right? So just um, link the two. Right? And, right. So that is it. It's very simple, right? I'll soon give you some question to to test you, all right? So, um, <clears throat> uh, let me just move on to the next um, slide, what we have here. Right, so I put here just to, right, I already mentioned this to you. So that power flow, right? Right, um, Q is like we're saying temperature difference divided by total resistance. Of course, this resistance is thermal resistance, right? So it's like I equal V over R, right? Ohm's law, very simple, All right? So as long as you keep this analogy in mind, um, it makes it very simple. And this is what I was showing you um, a short while ago. This could be the, the um, device that you wish to um, attach a heat sink to, right? Um, so you have the junction temperature, right? Of course, all of this, the manufacturer will tell you. In a little while, I'll show you a typical data sheet. Then the case temperature, the sink, right? So on this side here, you can see I have a bit, a bit uh, model here for you. So between the junction and the case, I use a resistor here, right? So as I've said, depending on the type of material, some material will cause the heat to flow through uh, um, easier than some material. So we'll have what we call a thermal resistance. It's not an electrical, the resistor you know when, when you do um, those vehicle IR circuits, right? Not that type. So um, here, resistor, because the heat flow between the junction and the case, so the thermal resistance between junction and case. Now the heat has to flow from the case to the sink, right? So again, we said, okay, there's a temperature at the, the case, there's a temperature at the sink, and between the case and the sink, there is some thermal resistance. We call it um, RCS. Then now, the heat must continue to flow because we, um, we have the heat sink attached to it, right? So it's not going to move from the sink to ambient, right, outside. So temperature at the sink, temperature ambient. So between the sink and the ambient, we have some amount of resistance. And of course, like I said, this resistance um, is dependent on the material that the heat is going to be flowing through. And here, we say it's going to be um, RSA, thermal resistance from sink to ambient. All right, so how do we work out the, let us say, the resistance, the thermal resistance between the junction and the case, right? So junction and case, remember just a temperature difference that is going to cause the heat to flow, right? So again, as I showed you earlier on, um, Equal IR, so difference in temperature here, 
in the case of this heat transfer divided by Q. Here is like V over I, right? Remember, current flowing here is not current flowing. It is heat that is flowing. If we go to um, case to sink, again, the temperature of the case and the temperature of the sink, we need a temperature difference for that heat to, to flow, right? And of course, we divide by Q, that's the heat through um, this section, right? So of course, Temperature of case minus temperature of sink divided by Q. We go to um, the sink, temperature of sink to ambient. Right. So again, what is the, the thermal resistance here? Difference in temperature at the junctions. Right. So temperature of sink minus temperature of ambient divided by the heat that is flowing through um, that junction. So now we can add the resistance. The like resistance difference here the thermal resistance between the junction 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 say r junction a resistance to the junction it's our case to sink but what i mean i'm breaking up not here. Oh, um, I don't know what's happening here. Um, is it better now? I don't know yes. if it is from my end. I don't know. All right. So I was just explaining to you a short while ago that um, what are you doing here? Um, if you want to now consider the total resistance, in this case, it would be the resistance between the junction and the ambient. You would just be adding all the resistance. It's like resistors in series, right? In this, but um, this is thermal resistance, right? So resistance between junction and ambient, and the resistance between the junction and the case. We add the resistance between the case and the sink and we add the resistance between the sink and the ambient. All right, so all of this, right, is equal to just the difference in temperature between the junction and the ambient divided yeah. by the heat. That is it. Pardon me? I'm not seeing this. You're not seeing, are you seeing it now? No, sir. I don't know what is happening here. Let me, let me just stop this for a moment. And, um, is this a problem affecting everybody? Are you seeing the screen? No, it's, it's gone, sir. I'm not seeing it. All right, let me. I don't know what is happening. No, um, I don't know. Let me. Oh, the screen just cut off in the middle of the class. All right, let me get it back on. Is it back? Yes, sir. All right, good. Oh, boy. I don't know if strange things happen. The middle the screen disappears. Bear and reach again. Right here, sir. Um, 
I don't know if you, I don't know where I've stopped, where um, I lost you. But I was just talking about um, getting the total resistance and here it would be the resistance between the junction and the ambient. And as you can see here, this is like a series circuit, right? So to get all the resistance here, Going against it, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, man, it like you have bad connection. Mm hmm, that mercy. You can jump off Dr. Richardson said um, it, um, his laptop um, shut off. I guess the battery ran out and it shut off. So I'm soon, I'm soon log on back. Uh, hello? Yes, sir. Boy, I'm um, sorry. A while ago, um, my laptop charge um, went. Um, must apologize for that, and it just cut me off. Um, hope this thing's still recording here. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. The recording is still um, going on. All right. Um, <clears throat> let me bring. But are you still seeing the screen still? No, sir. All right. So it, it cut off the screen. All right. Let me bring back the screen. Um. No, I don't know. I all this madness at me. All right, um, where are we now? Right here, I'll explain to you here. We have the, <clears throat> the total um, resistance here, right? And it's like a series circuit, right? So we just add the resistance between the junction um, to case, resistance from case to sink, resistance from sink to ambient right, to get the total. Or um, we could just look at it and see, okay, we just need the difference in temperature between the junction and the ambient, then divide this by the heat that is flowing um, between the junction and the ambient. Just like V equal IR, very simple, very simple. All right, let us move on now. All right, so how do you select the heat sink? 
right? That's uh, probably uh, the question that should be on your minds at this time. Right? How are you going to select um, a heat sink? A heat sink. All right. So, um, you don't want to know the thermal resistance um, between the the sink and the ambient, and um, you can work that out, right? By um, you, you can show that it's equal to this, right? Of course, the the, the the junction temperature and the resistance between the junction and the case and the the heat the heat um, that should flow through the, the compound but through the component all of this um, the manufacturer give this deal right so the, the the two parameters that you have control over is it like the ambient and the, the temperature and the thermal resistance between the case and the sink right because you are making the, the this um, heat sink so you have control over those two parameters let me just um i think i've taken right so this from the data sheet right um i'm using the uh, power mosfet here the IRFZ44, right? That you will find all of this information in it, right? They tell you maximum junction to ambient temperature, tell you 62 and the unit degrees per watt. The case to sink, tell you 0.5 degrees per watt. The junction to case, right? Tell you is um, 1 degree Celsius per watt, right? So this information you can get it from um, your data sheet. I'll send to you um, this data sheet. Right, I put it on the, the canvas side so you can um, look through it. Um, let me see if I could um, bring bring up um, this data sheet here while while they are at it here, just to show you. Where's my um, no way? It's not coming up. This is not allowing you to bring it up. All right, but I'll send it to you. All right, I just so you can look through it. And, um, <coughs> so sorry. Um, so this uh, heat sink here that I'm showing you, I can see it has um, fins here, and um, the, the, the the spacing can affect. The, the whole heat transfer from the sink to the ambience, the thickness of the, the fin and the length, the width, right, the height, all of these can, can impact the the um, heat transfer. Also, the thickness of the base can impact um, your heat transfer. All right, so I don't know why this not. All right. Right, so we can basically optimize the performance by um, um, making adjustments to these dimensions, like the fin spacing, the thickness, length, width, and, and, and um, height. Right? <clears throat>
Um, of course, um, when you're doing all of this, um, you, you have to consider the manufacturability, right? And remember, I mentioned the, the space, because you can make it quite big, but you don't have the space to, to fit this um, heat sink. So you have to take that into consideration. All right, um, here we would have looked pretty much at um, this. So I'll just move to look at this um, concept already and also the power loss and design. So what I want to go at is, is this, right? Example, if you look at this, I may get a, a sheet here. All right, so this is very simple. So I have this one here for you to try. A power MOSFET manufactures data sheet lists the junction to ambient thermal resonance as that's R J A equal to 62 degrees Celsius per watt. The maximum junction temperature is listed as 175 degrees Celsius. But the designer wishes for it not to exceed 150 degrees Celsius for increased reliability. If the ambient temperature is 40 degrees Celsius, you have been asked to determine the maximum power that the, the FET can absorb. All right, I um, most times I'll just ask you to draw the model, right? Once it, just like when you're doing, um, when you started learning Ohm's law, right? You would draw the circuit, right? You say I have a series circuit, um, R1 equal 50 Ohm, R2 equal 30 Ohm, and it's connected up across a, um, a 12 volt source determine the current. You can't see the, all of this in the head. You can draw look the circuit. I showed you a while ago the circuit, right? So we have Q, the power flow, right? All right, so what do we have? We have um, the heat going to flow from there. Start from the junction, right? So between here, we have what? Thermal resistance of, um, and not put TH, because you know it's thermal resistance. Right, so here we have a picture of the case from the junction, it goes to the case. So this is junction to case. And then here we have the temperature of the sink. So this is a thermal resistance between the case and the sink. Then the heat going to move from the sink and go out in the ambient. So this is T A. So R sink to ambient. Remember if you can't see this in here, visualize this. Best you draw it. Draw it and never get it wrong. All right, so they tell us that RJA, right, is equal to 62 degrees per watt. 
and their junction temperature right is 175 degrees celsius right but you don't want it to go over 150 degrees celsius because you want to keep it working as normal right and then temperature is 40 degrees celsius Can you work this out? This is what they are being asked to find. Okay. I should have tried it for me. So, so this Q, right, remember that's like the current that is going to flow, is going to be equal to some, that's what they are asking for, the power that can be absorbed by the mass effect, right? So, um, as I can see, here, it, it's going to be the temperature difference between the junction and the ambient right so that's it. that is what you would want here yeah. so the temperature difference between the junction and the ambient and divide that by the thermal resistance between your junction and ambient. Right, very simple. It's like V equal IR, the circuit. Right, so what is the ambient temperature now? That's 40, sir. All right. And then temperature is 40. And what is the junction temperature that you will use here? 150. Yes, 150. You tell you don't want it go over 150. Right? Right? So it's not 175. You are now the designer. Right? You don't want it go over um, 150. Right? So uh, this would be 150 minus uh, 40. And your junction, the resistance between the junction and the ambient. Right? 62. 62. Right, so when you work that out, um, this is what, what you get. 1.77. 1.77 and the unit they use here is what? What? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, since I get the basic ideas to how to work this problem, and to give you another one. All right, that's a blank sheet. All right, try this one. Oh, by the way, any questions? All right. Seem as if you understand it. Let me check. A diagram for you already here. So, the maximum junction temperature of a power transistor is Tj, called 150 degrees Celsius, and the ambient temperature that's Ta, called 25 degrees Celsius. If the thermal impedances are R, the, the RJC, that's the resistance between junction and case, is 0.4 degrees per watt. And RCS, of course, that's the resistance between the case and the sink, 0.1 degrees Celsius per watt. And the 
RSA, of course, that is the resistance between the sink and the ambient is 0.5 degrees Celsius per watt. You're asked to calculate the maximum power dissipation and B, the thermal, the, the case temperature. All right, so do it one, one. Let me hear you do, do A first and let me hear what you get. I'll give you a little time to, to think about it. Very, remember, it's a serious circuit. This <laughs> is a serious circuit. So it's nothing hard. Right? Ohm's, and I'll, I'll tell you do something. Reference it to Ohm's law. Right? You, you can't get these kind of problems wrong. No answer. 
but this is a serious circuit. Uh, oh, gentlemen. Sir. <laughs> the, answer, the answer for the um for the first one for A I got one twenty five. Oh yeah, good. Okay, I was wondering what was that mean. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. So good. Good. All right. One twenty-five. What? Mm. Sorry, the other one, sir. All right. All right. So those are few still trying to figure out what is happening. Um. You just need to to look at the temperature difference between the junction and the ambient. That that is when the heat is going to flow, out, so you can get the maximum um, power there. So T junction minus T ambient. And this divide by that would be the resistance between the the junction and the ambient, right? So you're going to have to work out the resistance between junction and ambient here, right? So this would be your Q, right? It asks you to to find um. the maximum power here. All right. So, you know, the ambient temperature, you know, the junction temperature, you just now need to find the thermal resistance between the junction, the junction and the ambient. And of course, how you find it. You just add them up. Right, you know that this one RJC, they tell you this one is what 0.4, they tell you that RCS is what um, 0.1, they tell you that um, RSA is 0.5. So you can get the total, just add them up, right? R John to Ambien, right? We just add R. JC plus RCS plus RSA. Just add them up. So that's what 0.4 plus 0.1 plus 0.5. Now add that up. What you, what you get? Um, what I get, Conrad? And mm -hmm. add up all of these. That's mm -hmm. what. Point, uh, point, one, one, sir. Yeah, one point five, one point five. That's one. All right, so that's one. Right, one degree Celsius per per watt. So you can now make the substitution. Um. So therefore, the Q is going to be equal to TJ, the teller is 150, minus um, TA, that's 25, divided by the one year, right? So 125 watt, right? So that's part A. All right, so part B, what's the answer? Uh, 0 0.33. What? Sir, I'm going to explain what we do, because... Um, 0 0.33. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, that's that not right, man. That don't write at all. <laughs> all right, so, but let's explain it. I tell you, I went wrong. So... So we want case temperature, which is TC, right? Right. So we um I have I just write down the formula. Q is equal to 
tj minus tc over rjc i'm not certain that is that. but you're right so far so you get it wrong I, I, you, do, you, calculate, you calculate something wrong if you have that there's no way i can get it wrong because that is where it's coming from well right? i must Double check then. Hmm. So, and you transfer it from TC, right, sir? Yeah, right, right, right. So, you're going to be TJ minus the power, right, the feed flow there, times RJC. So, how you get that? TJ minus, right. Right, when you transpose the formula. I got double check. Yeah? I'm going to double check, I think. I, let me have some. Um, something yeah, man, double check again. Is who write something? Yeah, somebody put post something here. So it's what? Is who this? Gibson. Why Why Gibson don't um, speak? Yes, the 100, right? Yeah, very good. Very good. Oh, I, I am dividing the, the, the 150. <laughs> right, because uh, I was wondering how you get it from. Remember, this is, this is just a serious circuit. You know? You're not supposed to get these problems wrong. <laughs> I, I am dividing the calculator instead of uh, minus, sir. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I tell you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> All right. So. Remember, it's a series circuit, so um, the the Q, right, each flow not going to change, right? So um, if you have here um, <clears throat> TJ minus TC, right, the the junction to case. T junction to case over over your um, resistance from your junction to your case. I'm write this a little better. Junction. All right. So you want the case. So you can just transpose what the case is equal to. So that's going to be TJ minus, um, that's, that would be a total power there, R junction to case. All right, so you just substitute the values, um, TJ, Remember, you don't want to, to um, um, where is it, 150, it's 150 here, 150 minus Q. Just calculate Q, same Q, 125, right, series circuit. So therefore, the same um, heat you're going to have flowing. And your R um, junction to case, that's what point four. Oh, I'll get a line coming in. Point five times zero point four here, right? So you work that out. Um, you're supposed to get um, what we said 100. 100. Yes. You get to 100 now, Conrad? Yes, sir. All right, good. So, all right, it can't get no harder than that. So, I'll leave some with you to, to try, right? There are enough there to go and try for your homework. So, I'll just finish this um section right so that is it i hope you you um
were able to to follow it. So I, I don't hear from everybody, but um, those who didn't quite quite get it will have the recording. Um, then I just stopped it here. Stopped it. Stop.